All right. Well, welcome everybody to uh, Week with the Arts. Um, this is the Gadsden Arts Center and Museum's fundraiser to kick off 2021 and uh, a new concept, of course, because we couldn't all gather uh, for our Evening with the Arts Gala this year. And it's really a fun and, and a different concept and we're excited about it. So this is our first presentation of the week, Collecting and Decorating with Art. And I'd like to start by um, thanking all of our sponsors of this series. One of the reasons that Gadsden Arts remains um, really strong and healthy in spite of the fact that we're about a year into a pandemic is our, our donors and our members and our sponsors are generous and they're very, um, very steadfast. They, they're really great about maintaining their support with us. And so these are our uh, Week with the Arts sponsors that are often our gala sponsors as well. So our Mona Lisa sponsor is um, Winston Howell and Debbie Leonard and Thomas Hal Ferguson, PA. I'd like to thank our Starry Night sponsors, uh, Charles Davis of Capital City Bank, Steve Carter and Jesse Suber of Henry Buchanan, PA, Wilson T and Ed Henson with uh, Marathon, um, Nathan and Courtney Roberts of Roberts Construction Services, Michael Dooner and Jacqueline Dooner of Southern Forestry Consultants, um, Bill Moore and uh, of, of Synovus, uh, Dr. Jim Murdaugh with Tallahassee Community College, um, and sorry, going back, Kathy Warren with Synovus as well. And then our American Gothic sponsors, Bob Smith Photography, Jason Boone of Coldwell Banker Hartung, Norman McMillan of CSI Contracting, Kate Clark of Cypress Capital, Will Fixel of Fixel and Willis, Jim and Kathy File, Rainey Thompson of Coldwell Banker Hartung, and Bobby Monroe of Supporting Your Choices Incorporated, and she is our People's Choice Award sponsor. So um, much appreciation to all of them for helping support Gadsden Arts and make this week possible for us. Um, this is, of course, our fundraiser for Gadsden Arts exhibitions and programs in 2021. We have a great range of exhibitions and programs coming. Um, in spite of the pandemic, we've got two major exhibitions, 15 exhibitions in all, and um, just a full slate of at-home, online, and um, on-site programming at the museum. So we're excited about what's coming. Uh, and of course, all of this supports our mission of, of improving quality of life. And even this Week with the Arts is mission-based. Um, you'll all hopefully learn some new things about the art of creative living, and we'll be celebrating our mission of fostering the careers of our region's artists by promoting their work. And this is, of course, again, funding our work to enrich education for children, to bring um, chances for them to express themselves and learn about and make art. For many of the children we serve, this is their only access to art experiences. Uh, we're bringing lifelong learning to adults. We're bringing people together, even online tonight. And we're supporting our local economy. Um, last year in the pandemic, our economic impact was estimated at three quarter million dollars. When we're not in a pandemic, it's more um, close to a million dollars annual economic impact. So all of those things are being supported through this fundraiser. Um, we, we would like to thank our very special guests tonight and, and the speakers this week are just phenomenal. So starting with Kenan Fishburne and Mary McNamara, um, I can't thank all of our speakers and, and these two enough for the time and talent they're sharing with us by doing these presentations. And, and tonight you're in for a real treat. I've told Kenan and Mary that they should have their own television show um, they're talented, they're experienced, they know how to live with art, they teach others to enjoy doing the same. Their presentation, Collecting and Decorating with Art, um, is an introduction to the art of collecting and the art of decorating. Kenan Fishburne is former owner of Main Street Design, and she's currently a professor of interior architecture and design at Florida State University. And Mary McNamara is founder and owner of S Signature Art Gallery in Tallahassee, which since 1996 has offered a broad selection of original art representing artists from throughout Florida, the Southeast, the United States, Canada, and Europe. So um, thank you to them. And with that, I will pass it back to Anissa to start our presentation. 
Thank you, Grace, and we are so pleased, both Mary and I, to be here to discuss collecting and also designing with art. Um, it's a great way to support this auction, um, and we are sitting in the midst of these beautiful pieces that are being auctioned off, so we hope you'll be kind of sneaking peeks over there to see what, what they look like. Um, Mary and I have been working together for years uh, in our respective positions, mine as a designer, uh, bringing clients in or sending clients to her. She is a gallery owner um, who knows a lot about artists and the people that she's showing. So it's been a wonderful collaborative um, effort. Um, and also, we really, really feel strongly that collecting art, infusing it into the interiors that people we live in and work in every day, is just a really important thing from a divine point of view. Um, so we want to share our thoughts with you and give you some very specific suggestions as we get to the end as well. Well, so perhaps the best place to start would be for us to define art. Art comes in very many, many mediums, and several of those mediums are shown here in our lovely auction items. Clay, metal, wood sculpture, paintings, glass, textiles, photography. We'd also like to broaden the definition to include reproductions, prints, serographs, lithographs, monoprints, really the list goes on and on and it seems like every time you turn around there's more ways to create art and that's happening and continues to happen. Um, but I'd, I'd also like to say that when we um, view an object or an image and we're comfortable referring to it as art, often it isn't about the monetary value of the piece, it's our connection to it. And I think that that's something that both Ken and I are gonna talk about today, here and there, um, but seems like an important thing to talk about at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I think we also then wanted to talk about what you do as an interior designer with your clients and whether the work that your clients gravitate to, is it as broad as, say, the collection that we are sharing the space with today? Oh, it is. It's very broad. And, you know, I think a lot about art as a, and how I, I relate to it as a professional designer, what I need to say to my clients, how I feel about it. And I think probably the most important thing that I have to do sometimes is, is let clients know how important art is. Um, often um, art is kind of, it, it, it's not considered more than just an, it's like an accessory, kind of like a rug or something else, but it's a much more important than that. Um, you know, from a design point of view, art brings color, it brings views into an interior where you don't have a window. Um, it helps with that large space that's, you know, above where we sit and have furniture, which is usually three to four feet up, and then what do you do with the rest of the, the wall? Um, and, and the other interesting thing about art is we all have art. We've been given art, some of which is photos or frame pieces over the years. And so what do we do with the art that a client already owns? Do we work it in? Do we, how, do, how do we deal with that? So because the most important thing about art is it's intensely personal to the person who owns it or is going to purchase it, um, it's always about not just how does it look in the interior, is it the right color, etc. It's about what the art means to that person. Um, and I think, I think that if we don't think about that when we display art decoratively, we're really missing the opportunity um, that people need to be able to have art, not just as something they collect or something that they, they just like, but that really does give the interiors of their home an important aspect of balance and various other things that happen with art. Um, when we're doing art in our interiors, we basically have to, I think as design and also gallery owners, help explain art to some of our clients so we understand where does it come from, not just what they feel about it, but what it really brings um, as something very special that you can collect. I think that's, those are all great points. And it, you know, I'm glad that today we're in the space that we're in with all the art, um, not only for you to see it and us to enjoy it, it's very inspiring, but it reminds me of how daunting a task it can be, particularly um, 
for, say, inexperienced collectors. And I assume our audience today is experienced collectors as well as beginner collectors. So to a degree, this may be more directed to the latter group. But so much of the starting point for all of us is to think in terms of what do you see and what do you connect with? What speaks to you? Um, there's not a, you know, there's not a rules, there, there's not, the designer <laughs> said I have to have a line, landscape or I have to have a, a still life in the dining room. That doesn't, to me, the most important thing with art is that you connect and you feel something. And that first moment really is the moment that triggers the beginning of the collection viewing selection process and um, kind of takes the, sets the tone so you can relax into it. After you see a work and you, and obviously you're drawn to it, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a, in a very intangible way, you, it speaks to you, it, it has the feel that you connect with. Um, then you can worry about, well, is it the right size? Is, the, is it the right color palette? It also will draw you in from that moment of connection, and I think this is a, a lovely part of the process. At that point, you would like often to understand who, who is the artist that did this? How did they do this? What other work do they create? You become really drawn into the details um, of maybe that work and other pieces as well. And that really adds a level of depth and meaning to the experience of viewing and selecting art. This is, let me just interrupt you and say, this is why I love working with you and being able to bring my clients to you because you know so much about the art and particularly all these things about the, about the artist that I literally do not necessarily have time as part of the, you know, the principal designer on a project to spend time on. So well, it's I, awesome to have you. Know, so often getting to meeting, getting to know the artist, and even if the artist isn't, you know, if he's an out of town artist out of the country, you can still do research online. Um, galleries should have either artist statements or bios. We're big fans of more of the artist statement. It's fun to see their shows and their credentials and where they graduated from and whatnot. But to understand how the artist created the work and what it means to them, where, does, where did that come from within them? And why did they love to create that type of work? Why do they you know, use a, do work in mixed media and incorporate found objects or old photographs in the paintings or you know, what have you? It's just, it's, there's a lot to know that only enhances your enjoyment of the, of the work. It's just so much fun, let me just say. So much fun. You know, one of the questions that I get from time to time is, you know, do my clients ask me to include or choose art, when, you know, right away? When, when do I bring that up? Why do I bring that up as a designer? And, and I, I think it's interesting that, that Clients do not think of art. They're concerned about the other more practical things they're spending money on. They truly don't often think about it unless it's something they already own. And I always ask about that early on in the project, what you have that you really like, and let's look at it. Um, and let me just say, I just say that sometimes that's a really interesting discussion because they're like, I feel like I have to use this. I really don't like it. It was given to me by my relatives and and then I will be I will be in the position of saying well maybe we don't put it in the, in the most important part maybe we buy something separate are you open to that and I think the reason why art is often kind of buried to the end of a project um, rather than being brought up in the beginning is because of budget I think people just have so many things they're excited about spending money on transforming a space um, rearranging a space or whatever it is that they really don't think about art. So I think a good interior designer always, always talks about art. And in the beginning when you do that, and you're, let's say you're looking at the, the clients changing their interior, and you, need, you realize that there's a, they like balance, that's what they really love the most. They're real symmetrical people, they're not wild, 
well to people. So they need, you need to create the, the furniture arrangement so it reflects a balance to the space. But right in the middle of the wall that you are balancing to, there's no window and there needs to be a piece of art there. And normally, as you work through a space plan with a client, or you're standing in the space, talking with them, you can literally get them to see that by saying, this wall is, you would not say a problem, even though in your mind you're thinking that, this wall needs something really dramatic and wonderful on it. Um, and I think it needs to be a piece of art. And I also think we ought to go big, or we need to do a collection, or three pieces, or whatever I feel would be good. And, and the client is going to be thrilled with that suggestion as a design suggestion, but they're going to be scared because they want to know what you're talking about money-wise. So what, one way to do that is to create a budget to say, okay, if we're going to be spending $50,000 redoing this space, throwing out just a number, let's devote this amount to art. Um, I'm not giving you a percentage because it depends on where art needs to be. And you know, I'm looking at, there's bigger pieces here, um, large pieces that might fit the bill to that one wall I was describing. And then there's wonderful little pieces that you need over a small place next to a lamp. Um, we have some images that Mary put together of some of the auction art in such spaces and you see exactly why it looks so great in that space. Um, and that's part of the design process. Um, and that client is not going to think of that in my opinion. Some people do, but they're kind of not sure why art's important and where it should go. So, yeah, that, yes, I do bring it up. Well, you're, so, you're very wise to bring up the issue of the cost of art, mm -hmm. because that's another off-putting thought. And art doesn't have to be expensive. I think that's one of the primary reasons why when we started with defining art, we made sure to include reproductions and prints, because it's, again, it's, something that speaks to you and a lot of us can't afford the original but if we're unfortunate enough for the artist to create limited editions or reproductions it's a wonderful wonderful way to have beautiful imagery on your wall and also i appreciate bringing up that art doesn't get brought up often um, um, until the end of the end of the project but of course our favorite scenario is when the interior evolves very much in connection with either existing or art or art that has been selected to be a part of an interior. If art's front and center, you know, we love that. We've also, and not just because we're in the business that we're in, it makes perfect sense sometimes when you're redoing a room completely or substantially, is to start with that piece of artwork. Obviously, you love it because you're connected with it, it's speaking to you, so what a great way to know these are the colors that we want to use in the room. Yeah. Or we want yeah. to keep yeah. the room very um, monotone and just let the art colors come out or what have you. But I would think that would be a great tool for a designer to have. It to is. come in and say, we have this large painting that we just purchased in an auction and, and at the Gadsden Art Center. <laughs> And work, let's work around this. That's, that's nice. very, very doable. Art doesn't need to limit you going forward in any way. And since we're talking about the beautiful art that we're sitting around that's for the auction, I just want to say the pieces that we are that, are, that are here are most, I think, all originals, if I'm not mistaken. And so there we have an opportunity to pick up some wonderful, beautiful originals that are going to be auction bids, and I'm just letting y'all know that I'm going to be bidding, and you need to watch out because I have some pieces, and so you better get on that because I'm going to bid hard for some of these pieces. So seriously, I, I, <laughs> for me, yeah, not yeah, clients. Me too. So That's look right. out. That's but right. but something else that um, that I think I, that you made me think of just now in designing with art and interiors is that. You know, we I made a reference to pieces that you don't like anymore, that you're just like, ooh, do we have to use those? And sometimes I look at pieces like that and think, oh, wow, those are, those are really great. And I can say to a client, you know, the reason I think these pieces would work so well in this new, you know, new area or, or new color scheme or whatever it is, is because we might want to add new pieces to the older ones that you're not sure, that are, that are tired for you. And so that's another reason to purchase art, is to add to a collection and to be able to, to keep a piece 
that could be used in a different way if it was grouped with others that are not necessarily the existing ones, but something new. So that's something, uh, that's a trick that I use often because I think some of the art is beautiful and I can say to the client, you know, why can't we use this in this way or in this location and put some new art with it or around it and then you have the best of both worlds. So I think a lot of times it's just being um, creative with how art that's existing as well as needs to be purchased should be shown and where it should go. Um, so Mary, I, all right, this is kind of going back over to the gallery experience that you, you provide. I have a question for you and that is when I send clients into your gallery or when clients come in on their own, mm -hmm. I'm curious what process you use in the gallery since they're just there looking at art and they're not in their interior, they're not necessarily with a designer at the time. How do you, um, how do you work with them when someone just walks off the street or comes in to look at art mm -hmm. for their new interior? That's a great question, and I think that what I'm going to describe that we do, I'll fold into the experience of coming into this room and viewing the, the mm -hmm. auction items. Um, so, of course, we want people to feel welcome in the gallery. We don't want it. We want it to be pleasant, a respite, um, not not daunting. Oftentimes, people will come in because they're looking for a specific piece in a specific place in their home. Sometimes they've got 30 minutes to kill before their next appointment and we're lucky that they want to come and see us. But when a, a new visitor is in the gallery, we encourage them to just enjoy and look at the work. We've got a, a, a pretty broad collection of work, you know, landscape, figurative, still life, etc. Um, so not to be so on a mission, not to think, okay, I'm gonna, you know, speed walk and see if I see anything that has the perfect color of turquoise that I think I need in this painting over my sofa. <laughs> Just to, to, to give us the information and almost self-inform that you don't miss what you connect with because that tells us volumes. If you love this painting, but don't so much gravitate to that one, that tells us something about what else we could show you or point out to you that, that may be helpful in your process of looking. So I would say when you come downtown here and view the work, maybe try that same approach where you don't think, okay, what am I gonna bid on as much as, wow, look at all this lovely work and just appreciate and experience it in the moment that you're here, which sometimes the way our lives go, we tend to sprint through things more than we realize. Do you, do you ever let a designer come in, <laughs> I know the answer to this question, and take some art and take it to the house? Absolutely. I mean, that I, or you, you I might say to my client, um, now that you've been to the gallery, what did you see that you like? Mm -hmm. um, and then I can sneak in, or, you, or they can go back and you say, yeah, let's try it in the house. Um, or we can do a picture showing you what it would look like. Absolutely. Um, we're, big, we're big believers at look, in looking at work where it is intended to go. I think that's important. We're happy for clients to take work home. Yeah. Um, we're happy to bring it out. Certainly designers love to come in and pick this, this, and this and take it and try it. Because it's, again, that first step in the gallery or when you see work is you know you like it but it's, you've got to continue to love it in your lighting, on your wall color, with your rugs and your furniture. And then when it, that all comes together, it's, that's when the real magic happens. It's pretty spectacular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So um, I want to get all academic on you now and talk to you about some design terms and tell you what they actually mean. And that's my way of being able to share with you some design information on art. Um, so, um, you know, when an interior designer goes through school, they learn about the elements of design. And there are words like um, human scale, focal point, balance, color, texture, harmony. And, but, and I'm, I'm not making fun of them because as, a, as an interior design student, you're like, what? Okay, I thought I knew what balance is. So I, but I would like to teach you a little bit about that to help you understand um, how artists works in an interior, what it can do. One of my favorite ones is human scale. 
Mary asked me earlier, or said to me, I, thought, I really like that term. And human scale is really important, but it's real simple. Um, our body, you know, has an, has an eye level, you know, like five feet is what we usually use. And I know she's going, yeah, that's how we hang out here at the gallery. And so when we're, when we're trying to decide not only what to choose for art, but the size of it and where it should go, we have to think about eye level. And we also have to be willing to break the rule of, you know, just coming up here and, you know, basically it has to be at eye level. Well, it doesn't always have to be at eye level. It could be that it's below for a dramatic reason or that because the piece is so large, we want the center of it to be at eye level. But human scale is so important because when you think about our interiors that, you know, we always know that our ceiling height is going to be like eight feet at least, but some ceilings are nine, ten, whatever, or vaulted. And so that eye level is a good, is, it's a good place to start for our scale, but we need to know, well, what else do we need to consider when we're trying to decide, is this the right piece of art and where should it go? So human scale is where you always start, is your body, your eye. I will tell you that men generally hang things too high because they're taller than us, so we always have to adjust a little bit for that. Um, so guys, just know that. But um, that's really important. So when I say human scale, that's what I'm talking about. Another one, another design term that I love is texture. And I'm looking at that piece, I don't know if you're seeing it in, on your, your um, picture, but that wonderful piece over there, the black one that's in the auction. The Dan and, Taylor. You, yes, the Dan Taylor. And you look at it, thank you Mary, yeah, she's, we need her. That piece is so textural, it has a feel to it. It's not just a you know, piece of art with lots of color, but it is textural. And I think that's, that's so important, just like when we purchase a couch and it has a soft fabric or a tight fabric. Art has texture, it either it doesn't or it has reflectiveness, it doesn't. And that's another thing that we consider as designers when we're trying to place a piece of art, um, is that does that texture enhance the art where it is? And I think Mary's gonna talk to you about lighting briefly, maybe, but lighting is a huge part of that as well. Another thing is focal point. I think we all know what focal means, it's like the spot you want to look at first. And, but the interesting thing about focal point is it's not just created by one thing, whether it's an eye, it could be a vaulted ceiling, clearly that's going to create a vocal wall. But we can create focal points all over an interior just with the art because of where it is and what it's hanging over. Um, some, sometimes designers will place a piece of art, a small piece, as you get ready to enter into a foyer or as you go into the, to the guest bathroom or, and it creates a focal point to the entrance of that, what we would normally think is not a focal space. So there's lots of tricks with focal point, but you need to think about that because focal point is really important. Color, we know, I mean, color is really important. Yes, there's a lot to be said to unify an interior by having a color repeated, like the turquoise in the paint uh, or in the sofa, and then there's a touch of it in the art. But there's also the other thing, the other idea of contrast, where you don't want that color in there. It's just totally different. It's a black and white piece in a colorful room, and you're not trying to pull the color in. So the confusing part is that color can be manipulated in many, many ways in an interior. So it doesn't have to be matchy-matchy, and if you just happen to really like it to be just on its own, that works too. Um, it is nice to sing, but there's a repetition somewhere of a color that might not be the one you would expect somewhere. Repetition is very important, but it doesn't have to be right next to it or right underneath it. Um, you know, I could just go on and on about this. I think the last thing I think is really important is just creating a sense of harmony with your selections. And harmony is, you know, a musical term, meaning that things go together. Um, and I think that ultimately is a great way to curate the art that you use, um, that you just think about how does it fit together with it, with not just the room, but with the other pieces. So there you go, that's, the la that's a big academic <laughs> short way of saying here's why designers use these terms. This is what they're getting at. So. That's all really beneficial to put out there all together and how those elements work together and give you the balance. And it's, it's striking to me how relevant that is, particularly as we're in this space and as you can see 
there are multiple pieces on all the walls and the staff has done a great job installing the room. It's, it's very pleasing and the work still does stand each one on its own. Um, but we, this is something we do a good bit of, and I'm sure you do too, Kenan, as well, particularly with a lot of um, older collectors downsizing. They have the, their, their art, a wonderful collection, and a lot of times when they're in that smaller space, we will create salon walls, similar to what we have here where you have groups, grouping of art, and it's really a wonderful way to show off often a very diverse collection. And you brought up some of the terms, the repetition, to even have within your salon wall, perhaps two or three paintings by an artist, to have variety, co different color, to add three-dimensional ob objects, not have everything just be the two-dimensional paintings. So there's a lot of what you just shared with us that I find could be very applicable and helpful with bringing art into your home and displaying it to its best. I just have to say, I, and I forgot to mention this, but bringing up the, the groupings or salon walls, just about every single project I've ever worked on, one of the first things a client will say is, I have no idea how to create, how to hang all these things. They're, they're so disparate, I don't know what to do. And the first thing I always say is, we will lay them out on the floor. And we will measure and we will play with it because I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> we will figure it out together. And um, so I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so um, Mary, the only other thing that I was going to suggest that I'm thinking about that my clients always want to know about is the te technical assets. Mm -hmm. Like some of the things you know so much about, like mm -hmm. um, glass and framing and all that. Okay. It's not a fun thing to talk about, I guess. But yeah, if you would, I would love to hear about that. Well, it's important. And when we visited the other day, you used a term that I'd never heard. Really? Applied. Yes. <laughs> Translating art into an interior. Yes. yes. So you hear you have this painting, and it's lovely. How do you make it? You bought it because you love it. How do you have it be placed in your home so you can enjoy it yep. the most? Um, so that brings me to talk about framing, lighting, and touch a little bit more on the installation yeah, of art. That's great. Um, I think there's, it's very important to have a well-chosen frame for your painting. That said, I think there are a lot of paintings that are hang beautifully unframed, and a lot of interiors really benefit from a mixture, which we are, have found that 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 works very well. Um, for the installation of work, we do this a lot, and just like you, we have a lot of angst over <laughs> an inch or two up or down because it really does make a difference. And there are, as Kenan mentioned, some rules of thumb about installing your artwork, but there are a lot of great installations that have happened because you threw those rules of thumb right out the window. I love that. <laughs> you know, it's true. But it's a, it's a good place to start and then if you abandon the rules, yeah. that's fine. Because it changes so much. One room, you know, if the ceiling heights are different, um, the furniture placement, what have you, there's, there's a lot going on. So be open and breathe your way through it and you'll, you'll get there and have the perfect, um, perfect installation grouping um, and last but not least lighting um, oh, yeah. that's big and a, another daunting element um, related to artwork for lighting is very important if you think about being able to actually see the detail and appreciate the detail in your art obviously you, you want good lighting if you've got the, the, the room in the ceiling you can do directional lighting um, if you don't have a lot of room to, and don't want to necessarily go to the expense of um, getting into your ceilings and having to resheet rock and whatnot, 
Um, track lighting is a great way to go. Um, it's a little bit more contemporary, but there are a lot of styles. So even a in a traditional home, track lighting can be a great way to light your work. It also gives you a lot of flexibility. So if you move your art around, which is a great thing to do, changing spa your, the space of your art may, just gives it a whole new life. Um, you look at it anew. You notice it more just because it's moved. And track lighting does give you that flexibility. Manufacturers of picture lights have come a long way. Oh, yeah. The picture lights, they're a great addition if you want to, again, create more of a focal point, put a picture light over a painting. There are larger picture lights available now. They can hang over a salon wall and wash light onto all of your paintings. That's a great look. Your picture lights can be hardwired into the wall or they make them where you can just plug them in. That makes it very easy to Do they make battery out. ones? Are there any that are on batteries? Yes, and they're called flashlights. <laughs> yes. I mean, there was, we never went to a trade show oh, back when we had that. trade shows <laughs> without asking about that. And really, they give you a little glow, but yeah. it's not, you know, the, to me, the best lighting is an LED yeah. picture lighter. There's still some that are halogen, and those are great. You know, they, they give a lot of oomph to it. Um, so just all of those things are just things to think about as you, you know, live with and improve and enjoy your art. Um, so is there anything else we want to I just to want to thank you for doing this with me. Um, it's, a, it's just been a pleasure and um, it has been. I want to thank all of the folks that are, have um, plans to, to do the bidding and also to look at this art, come down here and look at it since it's available to be seen. Um, we really appreciate the support that we that you're going to give us and that you are giving us. Um, so I will turn it back over to, um, you, I guess, uh, Grace. And um, there we can answer questions, any that you might have based on things we've said. So we'll be available to do that um, when she uh, announces it. So thank you all very much. And we have enjoyed being here. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Okay. All right. Welcome back. <laughs> You're there. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. And thanks again to uh, Mary McNamara and Ken and Fishburne. They're just, um, you guys are fabulous. There's so much good information in that. I have to admit, I have now listened twice and I could listen again and pick up more information. And this is basically what we do for a living. So um, amazing. Amazing. So I'd like to open it up now for questions. And I saw some questions in the chat. Yeah, we had one from Cheryl. Um, when y'all were talking about sharing artist stories, I think with potential collectors, um, you know, Cheryl's an artist. She said, what's the best and most helpful way to help you tell our story? So if either Kenan or Mary want to answer that one. Where are you, Mary? <laughs> oh, there she is. Mary, Mary's muted. <laughs> okay, make her unmute immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Mary. <laughs> so um, the, I think I understand the question, but Mary, and I think this is what you and I had talked about a little bit. Is it how to share the artist stories? I think so, yeah. Is that what, is that what you want to know, Cheryl? I don't know where Cheryl went. <laughs> She may, she may have head, headed out. Or she's she's there. She's just muted. I, but yeah. I see. She her. said, "What can we do to help you?" <laughs> what, yeah. What can artists do to help the gallery? What can artists do to help the gallery? I think that's a question, probably for you, Grace. Am I am I right? Oh, Grace, you're muted. I, I don't mind jumping in as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, there you there. go. Angie would be a good one, or Mary, I would yeah. say, our, our curatorial types. Yeah. Well, I, I would just say, from, from our um, perspective, and I know Anissa can also talk to this, is having a readable but also um, a kind of a deep meaning. So it, it's great to be able to tell stories about the artists and share their backgrounds, why they got into it. A lot of artists um, tend to write a little bit too academic, um, using a lot of terms that are don't always mean something to kind of the lay person. Um, 
but you also don't have to be too literal. You don't have to tell someone exactly what they're looking at, but it's really nice to, to give people a hint at what were the mood, what was the feelings. It's great if it's, you know, a, a particular series that you're working on. Um, I don't know if Mary had anything else to add, I'm sure. Well, the only other thing I was going to say is that Cheryl actually already does a great job at this because her technique is so unique versus a lot of other people that work in glass and for people to understand how she creates a piece. And I agree, people are seem to be more interested in how an artist creates rather than where did they go to school? How many shows have they had? You know, all of that adds an important layer, but to really understand how the work is made is, is a real important layer for collectors, I think. Anissa, do we have more questions? We do, sorry, I was muted. Um, so we had another one, Diane said that she really likes abstract art, but my home is very traditional. How can I incorporate abstract art into my decor? Want me to take a stab at that, Miss Diane? <laughs> um, I think when you have disparate styles, one of the ways you can pull them together is with color. So sometimes with the colors in a piece that is more untraditional, if they're somehow relating to colors in the space, whether it's furniture or other or, or, or a rug, that really kind of pulls it together so that it doesn't look like it doesn't go with anything. So I think you have to pay very close attention to the colors. Um, and I also think if you're gonna go out there and do something different than a traditional look in a traditional home, you gotta do it big. You gotta really make a commitment to something really different. So it doesn't look like you just stuck something in there and it was, doesn't go. You gotta make it a, maybe a focal point. But I think it's really easy to do color and focal point and go big. That's great okay. advice, Kenan. You step right in. Well, I kind of go back to the just try it. You know, yeah. start with a piece that you really like, because if you like something, you're going to be more motivated to be open to it working. It's likely going to go with other things that you like and just. Try it and live with it. I mean, there's so many, and abstracts can be, you know, very far ranging. Some are much approach more approachable than others. So find something you like and put it in the space and I bet it'll work. I think that's good advice. Just try it. Uh, um, I had a question um, about uh, kind of salon style walls. So if you're looking to make a salon style wall, how do you think is the best way to pull something like that together? Maybe same artists, same style, same frames. What kinds of things do you think about when you're making a salon style wall? Almost the opposite, honestly. <laughs> what I like to do, and maybe Kenan, I want you to weigh in on this. You've done this many times as well. I like to start with a lot of paintings and objects and framed pieces and then figure out what our space is and then pick the best combination of. And one of the things Kenan talked about earlier was repetition and groupings. And when you can have that in place, I think that is kind of anchors your salon wall. But every, every one of those, Anissa, you do these all the time too. So, you know, it's just, you work with what you have and you work with your space and, you know, somehow it all just comes together. It's, it's kind of magic. So I think that the errors I've seen people make in salon malls is that they try to do too many pieces. Um, that can be, especially it can overpower whatever the wall is they're trying to do. So you want to be a good curator of what it is you're gonna do. And that's why you put lay it on on the floor. And it isn't always does it all go so well together. It's, is it, is it, it's not too much together. Does that make sense? It, it, it needs to have some reason for being. And, and the way I used to always do it is I would select the, the piece that I thought should be in the center first. 
um, because of the size, the, you know, what it spoke to, and then work out from there. Um, and that was a great way to kind of not get too much and not get too haphazard. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've definitely, when we were hanging the walls in the auction room, there were, the big pieces went first, you know, those yeah. had to get separated out among the walls and then you can figure out how to fill in everything else. So I agree with that for sure. <laughs> um, so if anyone else has any questions, I don't see any others in the chat. You're welcome to put them in the chat. If you want to ask it privately, you can message any, you know, Angie, Grace, or I, or if you'd like to unmute and ask a question, you're also welcome to do that. Cheryl had another question it looked like down there about how did we get into the art world? Um, and for both of us, Mary, you and I both. Um, I, I am not a fine artist. If you gave me a paintbrush and said, do this, I'd be like, oh my God, no, 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 no. For me, art is in the interiors of, of mm -hmm. placing art and enjoying art. Um, and I have had many friends who are artists who have just fascinated me. So for me, it was it was a, a logical connection between doing interiors and enjoying the art that was gonna go into it, possibly secondarily. Um, but interior designers are very artistic, as you know. They don't have to be the one that picks the painting. They have this huge vision of how a, a large space can be beautiful. And so if that's, if that's art to me, then that's that's how I got into it. I love that. Uh, Mary, do you want to share yours? No, completely by accident, as life goes, right? <laughs> I got my degree in marketing at FSU and had the opportunity to work on a couple projects where I finished an office or a restaurant and that involved art and that just kind of blossomed into something else that I have so loved doing, you know, almost 30 years now. So it's, it's not really my background. I'm not an art history person, but um, I'm, I love what I do every day. Oh. We do too. <laughs> um, I think Alex and Jane might have had a question. I saw you guys unmute for a second. Would you guys like to ask? You're still muted. Hold on. Let me see if I can get you to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Well, I, what I wanted to know is sometimes uh, Mary or Kenan, you, you go to a home or someplace and they've got a big piece and it may just be propped up on the mantle or <laughs> even a dresser or something and it's in, in, in my first reaction is well they never got around to hanging it on the wall but the, <laughs> but in truth they never meant to so is that a is that a new look or is that acceptable or is it the end thing I mean that's my question <laughs> Oh, Mary. <laughs> I'll start and just say, Alex, let me put your mind to rest. It is not a mistake. It is, it is not a fad any longer, but it started out that way in my opinion. Okay. Um, I have learned over the years that if you're going to prop a piece of art up, it needs to be a big piece of art. You don't part, prop up some little tiny thing. Uh -huh. That looks like you forgot to hang it. So yes. most of the times I've done that were for a couple of reasons. I don't do it a lot, but it's because it's a large piece of art. More often than not, it will be propped on a mantle, you know, where, where it's not gonna be you know, falling off um, because it's really big and I'm trying to fill up as much space as possible. Um, but I don't do it a lot, but I have done it. And I think it is, it's a really kind of a fun thing to do. Um, if you have a large piece, you can prop something on that. That's my feeling about it. What do you think, Mary? Well, <laughs> I agree that sometimes it's the perfect thing. And sometimes I think when you take that propped piece and you hang it, it it's elevates its stature somehow. Um, I do like the look of layering. So sometimes you'll have the big painting hung, but maybe two or three in front leaning. 
And that's all about, again, the combination of pieces. Um, but feel free to experiment and try and live have different looks. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you guys right. said that was okay because I have two paintings hanging, yeah. leaning on my mantle. <laughs> and I've got stuff leaning right there. <laughs> So to me, the to me the operable <laughs> word is intentional. Yes, it looks intentional. Good to go. There you go, Anissa. You're fine. <laughs> Lovely. Um, does anyone else have any more questions for our speakers? We're we're right around six twenty five ish right now, so I don't want to hold anyone too too long. Grace, do you have anything you want to ask? Um, no, nothing to ask, but I do want to do uh, one more big thank you, and that is to our very own Anissa Ford, who is producing all of our presentations this week, and in the uh, event of a sudden quarantine last week, worked with our part-time staff to install this auction that you see behind me and, and did an incredible job. So Anissa, the girl with many hats, uh, love to give her applause for her many talents and hard work um awesome thank you it was awesome. fun <laughs> canada and mary made it really easy um we filmed that just in one shot so they made oh, it easy you're it's amazing you and mackenzie's skill so thank you <laughs> yes and i would like to thank mackenzie who is um my intern in the fall who decided to stay on as an intern this spring just for fun and she's been a great help as well I don't know if she's here yeah, right now. It's a great, great kickoff to the week, and that all goes very well. This, this looks amazing. Yeah. Thank well, you. I'd like to thank you all for being here and attending our first presentation in the week with the arts. Um, and thank you all for your support of these programs. We look forward to the rest of our week. Um, our museum and auction are opened tomorrow through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. No reservations needed, but please bring your face covering. And um, you can also enjoy all of the exhibitions during your visit. Of course, the Clyde Butcher America the Beautiful show is really wonderful. I love to go in that gallery and just sit and enjoy the space. It's very soothing to be in that space. Um, so please come by and enjoy what we have and um, our next presentation is tomorrow at two o'clock with the really talented Kay Edwards showing us how to make monumental floral arrangements out of whatever. Um, she's amazing at, at being able to do that. So that's tomorrow at two. And um, if you have any trouble signing on to anything or getting online to the auction, just give me a call. I put my cell phone number and all of those messages I send out daily or you can call my office number and I'll, I'll call you right back. Um, and, and I can be tech support if you need. So. Yeah, and if anyone wants to watch the presentation again, I just dropped the link into the chat so you can copy that. Um, if you wanna you know, take notes again, that is there for you to be able to watch again. I've also recorded this, so I might be able to you know, post it again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Have a great night. Okay. Good night. Good night. <laughs>